what's happening. Welcome back to The Past Alive. Thank you all for tuning in tonight for the return of Mailbag Monday, the series where I showcase mail sent in by you guys and also things that I pick up off of mostly eBay. And this week, not a whole lot to go through. We have two packages sent in by subscribers and also something I randomly picked up a couple weeks back. I haven't done uh, this series in a few weeks, but we'll start off with that and then we'll rip into your mail. The very first pickup, something that may tickle some of your fancies, may not, but a show that definitely tickled mine back in 1986 and a few years after that, the uh, Filmation's Ghostbusters. Now, obviously not as good as the real Ghostbusters, one of my favorite cartoons ever, but a cartoon I still loved and treasured as a kid, regardless, even though it was kind of corny, kind of cheesy, based off the live-action series from the 70s, the Filmation's cartoon that uh, just could not compete with our beloved real Ghostbusters that would come the same year. But still, this VHS tape I found on eBay, it's getting harder and harder to find these old cartoons sealed. And um, as of lately, I've been kind of into picking them up. Uh, you may have seen my uh, recent video where I bought this Pro Stars VHS, which I didn't even know they made these on VHS sealed as well. The beloved cartoon and very short-lived cartoon from the early 90s. And uh, I came across this. If I see these VHS tapes for like around 25 bucks in that range, I will buy them. And I feel like in the future, there will probably be more desire to go after these. And they will be much harder to find. And uh, probably more valuable too, being sealed. So I don't know what it is about uh, getting stuff in the original packaging and keeping it. But apparently I've moved on to collecting sealed VHS tapes. And they actually produced this in 1992. So... It was uh, years after the show had originally aired uh, in 86. But we have one episode on here, 30 minutes, color, fully animated fun. But I just love the old art and everything else. And uh, for a show I treasure as a kid, it's pretty sick. Made by Just for Kids. But I remember renting these VHS tapes of that show at uh, our Giant Eagle. If you're an East Coast guy, you may know what Giant Eagle is. But if, if not, you probably don't. But it's a grocery store. And they used to have, at one point, they had a video store inside of it called Eagle Video. It may trigger some memories for you, but I grabbed that for like 25 bucks on eBay. I couldn't resist. Next one. This package from Jason Miller came in last week. Please acknowledge the $2,000 price tag on the 88 Tops. Brian Fisher, would you please? And this one, I have no idea what it is because I ripped it out of that original shipper and it's still in something else to contain this mystery from Jason. What did Jason send? We got all kinds of stuff wrapped up in here. There is a note. We will take a gander at this. It says, Hello, Joe. I mean, it says John. It looks like an E. I don't know. I'm not very good at reading cursive, I guess. My name is Jason and have been watching your channel for years. I enjoy the humor you bring to the nostalgia scene. I'm a seller on whatnot and mostly I'll sell VHS. Well, that's pretty crazy. And ironic and video games while sorting through inventory i found a rare item i'm sure you'll love i'm not sure if you already have one in your collection but either way i think it's pretty cool i also included some cards for the rookie box that's freaking sweet man thank you so much jason it says keep the good work and enjoy the gifts so let's see what uh jason sent well maybe this is a vhs tape is it my lucky day for vhs's <laughs> it's pretty wild i just start kind of I mean, I have a VHS collection already. Is this going to be Filmations? Also? Oh, this is real Ghostbusters now. Oh, man! This is one I did not have. Play them ragtime booze. This is sick, man. This is absolutely sick. And I just said about uh, renting movies from Eagle Video. I feel like it was right around 1992. I rented this exact VHS. I think these might have been like more exclusive to the UK based on the box. But I rented the Play Them Ragtime Booze episode. And I think I had it for like maybe 48 hours back then. I want to say I watched that. I watched it over and freaking over again. I have a vivid memory of uh, getting that and being so stoked. It was years after it ended. And uh, I had kind of moved on to like, I don't know what it was in that era. It was probably Batman the Animated Series. And I came across uh, a VHS with this episode. And I was like hooked on it all over again. I watched it over and over again. And uh, that was the last time I would watch The Real Ghostbusters for quite a while. Because it was already taken off the air after that. But I think these cases might have been exclusive to the UK, possibly. I could be wrong on that. RCA, Columbia Picture. But 
One of my favorite cartoons, if not my favorite of all time. This is sick. I did not have this one. So, Jason, you hit it out of the park with this. Absolutely sick. And it was a rental at one point. 141-14. Definitely some sort of rental code on there. But, oh, man, that's freaking awesome. That's one I wanted to get, too. So, then even better, because I can actually watch it. It's already open. So, freaking sweet. And Jason sent some cards, too. And thank you very much, man, for uh, just uh, your overall support and just watching for all those years. Um, I really, you didn't have to send me anything, man. So the fact that you did um, is greatly appreciated. Let's see what we have here. It looks like we might have a Vladdy Guerrero National Baseball Card Day rookie from 2019. We got some stickers here. And he sells on whatnot. I don't think he included his information on whatnot, but I'd like to check you out on there. Maybe this is it. Retro Impulses. These are some sweet stickers, so that is it. Retro Impulses on whatnot. I will subscribe to you after this video. Check them out. I'd be curious to see what else you sell, but uh, I'm digging the logo. Put those in the background. And kind of the TMNT logo right here. I have a TPIA logo that um, closely resembles that as well, that uh, websites keep shutting down on t-shirts. <laughs> 80s and 90s retro nostalgia. And a bunch of stickers. So I may actually send these out to some people when I send, when I send packages, because they're freaking sweet. But uh, awesome stuff, man. To find out where you got those made out. I need to make some myself. We have an original... Star Wars Return of the Jedi pack. Nicely tucked away team bag. This is definitely a good way to ship old wax packs. Or any wax packs for that matter. So you can ensure that the, uh, the tabs don't get flipped open here. But 1983. Look at all those yummy ingredients inside of that piece of gum. Amazing. 83 tops. I don't have a pack of those. So that's freaking awesome too, man. I will keep that sealed. And we have an Evan Smith rookie. I think I had a bunch of this card, and I think I sold them all, so... You have welcomed it into my collection again. A Jeter rookie from 93 Pinnacle? That's way too nice of you, man. Guerrero National Baseball Card Day. A freaking Jeter Pinnacle rookie. I think this is better than the, than the one I have. I had bought one a while back. I'm pretty sure mine have, like, white corners. And we have a Freeman rookie? Man, freaking awesome. So I'll probably swap this out on the one I have. That's a good-looking Jeter rookie, man. Very, very cool stuff. Freeman, I feel like you can't go wrong buying and collecting Freddie Freeman, honestly. I feel like he's undervalued in the hobby, but uh, definitely a future Hall of Famer. And uh, it's 2011 Tops base set rookie. Definitely a good one. I think that's nicer than the one I have, too, as far as centering goes. And Emmett Smith, 90 Pro set rookie. So, six stack of rookies. And we got a Mulder. Look at this. Back in probably 1995... I had a hundred bucks. I went to a card shop in Connecticut, Bristol, Connecticut, called Rock Sports Cards. I miss it nearly every day of my life. I would, I wish they were still open so I could go and make a trip there. But I spent, I think, fifty bucks was the most I ever spent on a card on this Paul Molitor '78 tops. I was PCing him at the time. My PC was extensive. It was like fifty cards, maybe a hundred, maybe, probably not. But the most valuable card that I ever bought. It was a big decision to buy it. I think I had it for a hundred bucks probably Beckett book price back then and uh it was 50 to 50 dollars half off so I bought it and all my best cards got stolen or went missing somehow so um I did obviously buy it back since then but this is well loved it's got a big crease in it and UL Washington looks pissed about that crease but what are you gonna do also it's a dog-eared corner but it gives it character so we love that Bo Jackson tops rookie I don't think I had this card for some reason, I don't think I had his 88 tops. So that is pretty freaking awesome, too. And good-looking card, too. Very nice. There's a second-year Tony Oliva. I don't think I had this one, either. Tony Oliva and Jay Ward. I like that 64 design, though. That's definitely nice. Tony Oliva does have a rookie in 63. Um, they did a lot in the 60s. Lou Pinello, especially, he got, like, seven different rookies. <laughs> I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not really at the same time. So a second-year Oliva... That is definitely a sweet one. I don't think I had it. So, freaking awesome there. And a Jack Morris, 78 Tops rookie, also well loved. Very awesome stuff. Retro impulses on whatnot. I will, uh, I'll link him down below in the description too. But, uh, super cool, you man. You did not have to send all that stuff. And I'm, I'm excited about watching that VHS tape. I'm getting to the point where I, my toy room is almost set up. And, uh, I mean, there's still stuff all over the floor, but, uh, it's a work in progress. But we're getting there is what matters. So, very, very nice of you, man. Thank you so much. Check them out on Whatnot Retro Impulses. 
the last package we have covered up by the bulbous head of Raphael, or sorry, should I say severed head of Raphael Palmera, Joseph Robbins. He sent me something recently, uh, a few weeks back, and now we have uh, some sort of mysterious Office Depot notebook box to rip in through. My post office lady was like, I bet you there's something interesting in there. And I was like, I can only imagine. We got a note right here. So, we'll read this first and see what kind of debauchery awaits. There's some sort of rules here. Hey, John, as promised here, the rules for rookie, non-rookie cards is set forth in Article 4.8, 4 .8, Section C, of absolutely nothing. <laughs> nice build up there. LOL. These are, however, the only two rules that I've ever seen applied consistently to any and all transactions concerning one of the cards in question. For explanation's sake, I've given them in the first person's perspective. Keep on ripping, Joe Robbins. Very intriguing. We have some sort of game here. Here are the rookie card rules. Rule one number one. If I'm buying the card, it is in fact not a rookie card. It is practically worthless. Glance at the card quickly, making sure to look at what else the seller has to offer. Put it down immediately as if it's contaminated in some way. <laughs> Do not look at it again. You can't show interest. It is important to show your disdain for the card in question. Body language matters, and most definitely does. Should a transaction take place, the seller should be grateful that I was willing to take such a worthless piece of cardboard off their hands. Roll over two. If I'm selling the card, it is in fact a rookie card. It's extremely valuable. Place the card gently in front of the prospective buyer using both hands. Be pur purposeful and respective in your movements. Or respectful in your movements. The act should be reminiscent of placing a bay bird back in the nest. you got to be very careful. Again, body language matters. Should a transaction take place, the buyer should be grateful that such a priceless artifact of sports memorabilia has been placed in their care. I mean, there's nothing that you said in there that's not true. You have to have... What, what do we have in here? We got all kinds of goodies in here. <laughs> I didn't know if there was some sort of game that came along with us. We have packs. Joe R. sent more packs to go along with last time's... Or, or what was it? Was it two weeks ago? Let's see, a pack of... 3D dimension or dimension three in here. So interesting pack selection here that I'm kind of obsessed with. We have 93 Ultra Series One. That's not the Jim Edmond series. If you're all hoping for that, he's in Series Two. Ted Williams. I've opened a pack of these in a long time. So you can find number Jeter in there, number Brian Taylor in there. I know everyone's probably more obsessed about the Brian Taylor, but uh, it's kind of cool. Leaf 92 Series Two. Jeff Kent rookie is in there. Maybe a black gold Jeff Kent. Night on Russ. And 92 tops. What else we got? Dimension 3. A bunch of packs of those. I haven't really opened much of those, so we're going to have to savagely swashbuckle our way through these right now um, to show appreciation for Joe sending these. Thought you'd find these interesting. I've never heard of them. According to the Google Book Tube Gram on the old internet interweb machine, it was a massive flop on its release. I had a box of these, and I was putting them in pack lots. I think more so on whatnot. I want to say I was selling these, but uh, I just ran out of them recently. Thank you for replenishing that supply. Not sure if you have these rookies or not, but here you go. Not entirely positive if the last one's a rookie or not, but still a cool card. And I see a Spencer Strider parallel on there. Pretty sick. Very nice. Donruss Strider, a rookie, is definitely a good one for the rookie box. Kid Brian Hayes, New Age Performers Insert. Trevor May, I don't know if I've ever seen that one before, like a sepia refractor from 2015. That's pretty sick. Casey Mize freaking well put this one in the rookie box. Tops Heritage, Jeremy Pena, Prism. Definitely some in here that I did not have. And I don't think I had this one in particular. And that, as of all times, now is a good time to put this one in the rookie box. Definitely having a killer season. Connor Wong, Prism rookie. It might be, I don't know if it's parallel. My new, my new card knowledge is pretty bad. I had a interesting experience tonight um, with looking over a collection of newer cards. It's a, it's a story I'll have to tell you sometime this week. Wednesday will be another live uh, card auction. Logan Ohapi, a rookie, the 74 design. There's a Suzuki rookie, another one I did not have. Anthony Volpe, 88 tops insert design. Pretty sick one as well. And randomly, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, Batman Freaking Returns. That's pretty awesome. We must have to open a box of this someday. All right, so without making this video painstakingly long, we're going to open some of these right now. We'll open Ted Williams. I won't open all of them, but we'll open some. I try to keep the videos under 20 minutes so people don't fall asleep and um, just choose to not watch altogether. But we got Rod Carew starting things off. Brian Taylor, it's not numbered, but it is a freaking Brian Taylor. And back in 94, we've been going wild over that. 
And, I mean, they have some cool cards in here. It's a freaking checklist card, and it's very spiffy looking. I can't believe I used the word spiffy, but I did. Catfish Hunter, Moses Walker. Yeah, if you've never seen these before, I don't, know, I don't see them too often these days. Two checklists, one pack. As a kid, I would have demanded my money back and been really, really pissed off. But you got some pretty big names in here, including, um, was that Cy Young? Yeah, it was Cy Young, I was going to say. And uh, 93 Ultra is next. I'll do this one, 93 Ultra. Possible good inserts, possible Eckersley autograph. I think he signed, what, 2500 You can buy them for pretty cheap, but a nice design, especially compared to 91's release. In the debut year of Fleer Ultra, 91 was so bland and boring. 92 definitely looked a lot like these. They, they stepped it up a lot, you know, 92, but 93, I think, they really hit it out of the park. There's Larry Walker. Bernard Gilkey, of course, is an OG omen here. There is prime time as Corey insists on calling him. Jack Clark, Bobby Thigpen. Doesn't look like we're going to get any inserts in this pack, which may cause me to throw a temper tantrum, but I'll hold off a little longer to open this second pack. And we're not going to open all the Dimension 3 packs. We can save those. Because I'd like to have a little bit of a stockpile to do random pack rips. we got an accuracy, though. I will tell you that. I don't think it's autographed. Maybe we'll wait to see if it is. And then determine whether or not the temper tantrum is going to go into effect. Jay Buhner. You can always find errors and stuff like that in these two. Randomly missing foil or a name. And those are pretty sick. Because they're not super common. Felix for men running for deal, dear life. Billy Doran, there is an accuracy insert. It is not autographed. And Brett Butler, he's going to end that pack. I think we did not used to like Brett, Brett, Brett Butler when we were kids. For some reason, not not sure why. I think we're going to save some of these. We'll open some of them, get a, a real taste for what we're working with. Cool cards, though, just didn't catch on. As a lot of things in the 90s didn't. 95, the studio tried to make credit card looking cards, and oh, they were sick back in 95, but everybody else hated them. Maybe not kids, but sticking together, but uh, no paper loss. We got more grace. There's a backside, but they were really going nuts with the 3D stuff back in the 90s. Super futuristic. Dean Palmer. There's a Doug Drabeck. Fortunately, he's not calling me while he's tilted at the bar at 1 o'clock in the morning in my dreams, as uh, I've told the story about multiple times. And Chuck Knobloch jumping around. Would have called him Chuck Koblock and probably put that in a top loader back in the early 90s. Let's see what else we got. Let's see if we can get a nice, neat insert card. But I don't know if we'll ever actually open a box of these, but I've opened enough of them um, to give you a feel for what they look like and what we could find during the whatnot sales a long time ago. Ozzy Smith, there's Willow Thrill Clark as Corey calls him. Walt Weiss. I used to not like Walt Weiss. There's the big cat for Corey and by Bonilla. There's Happy Go Lucky Battle Cry. We'll do one more pack of these. And then we gotta save some. We we'll always have to hoard things and put them away for a rainy day, literally. Let's see what else we got. We find a nice shall I say spiffy insert. I conjured that one up because there's one coming. Montgomery, Will Cordero, and there's a bagpipes for Corey. Sweet insert card. Get your freaking 3D glasses on and dive deep into the epicenter of that gnarliness. Pretty sweet card, though. Mike Stanley, and there is Clemens in that back. I think we'll we'll hold off on these other ones because I've opened a lot of this stuff. As you've seen, I've opened 90 Donruss. I've opened 92 Tops. I've opened 92 Leaf, and I've opened... A pack of Ted Williams or two packs of those. And we got still five packs to mention three. But very cool stuff. I'll save this for any day. Joe R., thank you very much, man. That was very, very cool of you. I love the rookie card <laughs> rules, the explanation. I'm curious to know what you guys think about that or even what your favorite cards of the pack were. Do you remember these when they came out? I kind of do a little bit. But um, love to hear from you guys. As always, if you comment on the video, you have a chance to win. PSA 10, Jeff Bagwell. Score traded from 91, his rookie card, which I will give away on June 1st. 90 tops, rip. So looking forward to that. And also looking forward to the weekend re recap tomorrow night. I got a bunch of stuff this weekend. Haven't had time to edit the video, but tomorrow night you shall see that. And my travels in Maryland, etc. Bought a small collection of packs that I have not gone through yet, but there's a bunch of cool stuff in there. Rack packs from like 2014 and weird oddball stuff. We'll check it out. 
um, tomorrow together for the first time, and Wednesday will be the return of another auction. So thank you guys for watching. You guys freaking rule. And uh, if you want to send mail for a future episode, you can do so to the address down below. But check out um, his whatnot store, Retro Impulses, and uh, I'll see you back tomorrow night. Have a great night, guys.